for those that have joined us, uh, thank you very much for coming on. I'm Nina, I'm a business advisor with Community Enterprise in Scotland, and today I'm the moderator for Dr. Martin Valenti, who is the head of enterprise at uh, Scottish Enterprise. Um, I'm if you see me looking away, I'm looking at my notes. I'm new to this moderating, and some of you will have seen Martin already if you attended our earlier session, the Keynote 3 Climate Emergency. So some of you might be new to seeing him and some of you might be along already. Just like to do a wee bit of housekeeping first. Martin's going to speak and then if you would like to pose a question, uh, share your views or join a discussion, then please make a request to share audio and video. It's just the same thing as putting your hand up and one of our team will help you come on. Um, if we have quite a few of you coming on, um, we just say we'll keep it like one or two delegates at a time and we'll ask those not not coming on to, to mute themselves until you're invited to contribute, just to keep background noise and so on to minimum. You can maximise the screen. I'm told this is working now by double clicking, so you can do that if you want to do that while Martin's speaking, and you can minimise others in the same way. We do ask to keep your questions and comments brief to allow others to contribute. If you're just posing a question, we'll take you back off the camera to the next person to join in. We try to give everyone who requests a chance to become involved. Um, but if we don't, if we don't manage that, then please do use the session chat box and our speakers might be able to pick up on questions after the session ends. For those who don't want to come on screen, please do still get involved by using the session box and we'll do our best to answer these. And today's session is being recorded. If you don't want to be recorded, please don't request to share audio or video, but do participate through the session chat instead. So on that, um, I'm going to get started and hand you over to Martin. Hello everyone, this is the, this is very exciting because I'm quite a competitive person. So I'm trying to make sure this is the most collaborative, competitive, this is the most lively session. So I'm going to, I want to make sure this is the one where I see your faces. I'd like to see people coming on and engaging and chatting and talking about this. There's something that's happening in Scotland and I, and I, and I try to allude to it a bit in my, my kind of opening remarks about the climate uh, opportunity. You can't go into LinkedIn or Twitter or Instagram or anything without seeing everybody chatting about here's what's happening, here's what's happening, and it's all climate change. It's all really, really good news. And that's great, but I think what I'm still to see is a culmination of that. I'm still to see that as an overarching spirit in Scotland of hope for when it comes to climate change because the, the solutions to solving this problem are in our hands. We can do this. We've got opportunities in front of us. We've got the creativity, the capabilities, you know. And when I and I am an office at social enterprise, so I need to understand what the social enterprise collective USP is for COP. And surely you're all going to come on and tell me what that is, which is great. And I've actually had quite a lot of people email me privately saying, you know, we're ready to rock and roll. So that's just hugely great news for me to hear that. Like I say, I never do presentations. I never prepare for presentations. I just tell the truth because it's the easiest thing to remember. And for me, I feel, you know, I am speaking to the truth when I say there are phenomenal things happening across Scotland. Seriously, it's spectacular things. Some of the, the the residues of the first, second and third industrial revolutions are the are the cornerstone of the fourth. So if you think about all the old abandoned mines, they could be geothermal power sources. You think about the old abandoned landfill sites, they could be solar farms. You know, you think about the expertise and the technology that engineers have creating uh, solutions and fixing things. Well, can you imagine we could have a whole paradigm shift for engineers? So that all they do when they wake up, when they go to university, when they get involved in their work, when they put the boiler suits on or their black, the blue or white collars, as they just focus on solving problems that are good for society and good for humanity. Isn't that going to be just spectacular? So on the basis that I have, I kind of know a lot about what's happening in Scotland, except social enterprise. So I'm here at the moment to kind of pose some questions to you. I would love to see a, an active dialogue from you. Yes, you, I'm talking about you, to come on and say, listen, I've got this big idea how social enterprise, whether it's your individual enterprise or some ecosystem of enterprise agents, uh, social enterprises coming together. I don't know what the collective term is for a group of social enterprises. You can think of one, but coming together so that we can actually start to do some big spectacular things. Now, the reason why I'm saying big spectacular is that's what businesses, the big, large businesses, and I know that's a very small percentage of the Scotland's makeups, like 1% of that, 
they're actually all at this moment, and don't tell anyone I've told you this, but they're all looking at you. They're all looking to see what opportunity they can get involved in, what good thing they can do, what initiative they can back and get behind. So let's make it easy for them. So let's get together, create some fantastic ideas, and let's collaborate, and then we'll take them to the market. And again, I can't emphasize how excited I am about COP26 because I know I'm not going to miss this opportunity, and I hope you don't. We will never, ever get this opportunity again. It is a once in a lifetime. And when people are here looking at Scotland and understanding what our psyche is and what our motivations are, they aren't just to, albeit important, they aren't just to point at what's wrong and say, somebody needs to sort that. It is very much, we are here to sort it. We have a collective attitude. We are motivated by success. And we want to make sure we do the right thing in the right way for the right reasons and with the right people. So are you the right people? I pose that question. So I, I think I'm on my own in this kind of panel here at the moment, just chatting to you. So I think what I'd like to do at this moment is I've maybe spoken enough today. I'm keen and I've actually been encouraged. I've seen lots of LinkedIn and tweets and stuff pinging into me from area saying we're up for it. We've got great ideas. We want to do stuff. So if you're on this uh, and if you're in this session at the moment, please make yourself available and let's have a chat. So it'd be good to maybe put a question to you at the moment. Does anyone have some idea about the role of social enterprise specifically at COP? And I'd love to hear from you. Nina, is the best way to do this to take some of the questions that are coming in? Or? Yes, um, I'll tell you what I've got at the moment. I've got Lindsay oh, got here, someone. Lindsay Wakes coming in. Fantastic. Yeah, hi, Lindsay. Hello Thanks there, hi. Hi, Lindsay, hey. how are you? I'm very well. How are you, Martin? How are tip, you, Nina? Tip top. Very well, thank you. Um, Enjoying the day. So I'm Lindsay from Social Investment Scotland, um, and I'm particularly interested how, on a practical level, we can get involved because I'm sure we can come up with all sorts of ideas. Yeah. I'm definitely thinking supply chain, but I loved what you said in the last session about social enterprise um, festival. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think there's be lots of opportunity, but we need to be able to collaborate and work yeah. together. And it's it's finding the right place for that to happen. Yeah. So the festival this as well. The festival's really exciting idea for me because the last thing we want to be seen is is this country that's just standing looking like, you know, a you know, a bunch of rained on doer people who just can't get stuff done. I just love to show the 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 the, the spirit of Scotland. And I know that's easy to say, but there's something about if, if the world leaders and global businesses and a, over a thousand of the biggest businesses in the world come here, the Unilevers, the Accentures, they all come here. If they're looking at then the framework and the ecosystem of social enterprise in Scotland, is it different from the social enterprise in England? Is it different from the one in Wales? Is it different from the one in the US or Italy or Canada? And if it isn't, then why isn't it? You know, so what is their unique, what's the unique offering that you've got there? And I'm glad I've got Naomi here, who's another optimist from earlier on. Because uh, we were chatting about, was it fear paralyzes and hope mobilizes? That was it, yeah. Did you like that line? You can have that. It's a good t-shirt, isn't it? I quite like it, yeah. I'll pinch that as much as, <laughs> as, much as I can, if you don't mind. It's yours. And I see Neil there too. Hi, Neil. Hello. Hi. So, afternoon. Um, no, really interesting talk. Hi, Naomi. I mean, long time no see. Um, yeah. Yes. So yeah, tonight there's a there's actually a call of the Glasgow local group of the COP uh, twenty six UK coalition. Um, so there's lots happening around that. There's 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 a whole load of thematic groups set up to try and maximise um, some of that. There's also through the Glasgow Social Enterprise Network. Some of the members have been getting together to look at not just COP26, but in, in particular for Glasgow and probably for, for Scotland, but the legacy of it. So the idea that actually COP26 could roll into town for three weeks, all these people turn up, and most people in Glasgow don't even know it's it's here. Mm. So the idea of how do we um, take COP26 to communities? Okay. Um, how does COP26 get into G21? How does it get into G32? How you know All these different things. Um, and the idea of maybe twinning um, some of the social enterprises in, in Glasgow yeah. um, with some of the global social enterprises um, and looking at the legacy of Glasgow in terms of, if you look back at what you described there, some of the engineering, some of the things we brought to the world yeah. that has contributed to obviously uh, changing these places, but it's also been a big contributor to the climate impact that we're now suffering from as a result. Yeah. Um, so trying to, yeah, link with the global south. In terms of from an enterprising point of view, um, yeah, if we could if we could get every every 
person that comes to COP26 spending £20 in a in social enterprise in Glasgow, um, whether that's venue hire, buying a coffee, um, you know, whatever it is, um, and getting people um, into communities uh, to inspire, get involved. I think there's, there's yeah, there's, there's huge opportunities there. Yeah. Part of the challenge is, is creating the time and space to get away from what um, Catherine described as the you know survive and cope um, I know. element to actually get into the systems change element of that discussion. I know, but it was something I'd mentioned earlier that you may may have been you may have heard on the earlier one was surviving cope in a way is kind of like HMV board are probably still sitting going what happened to our business but we were doing everything right everything seemed really really good and Spotify has gone and stole it all. You know, and I think there's something there about the more you hold on to what's here, the less likelihood you're going to be able to move into that new space. So sometimes it's about for you. We're seeing that about the twenty pound per head. I actually think that's pretty straightforward. I think if you come up with a social enterprise, like a PayPal type event, and get some get code base to develop something, but or someone like that to develop something for you, and then invite every single delegate. Now the delegates that come all have to be approved through the UN, so they all get some kind of approval system, and that's one of the triage mechanisms. When you're coming to Scotland, here's what you can do: you can donate part of your, you know, you can offset a bit of your journey, which they're going to make anyway. I mean, nobody could say down with this up, but they're going to make the journey anyway. So let's get them involved in and in, in solving some of these problems. Uh, Hi, Roland. Hi there. Yes, hello, Martin. Good to see you again after the great experience of Caledonia University a few months ago. My goodness, as, as time flies. So for me, I think there's something about, so we were speaking there, Roland, about how, what is, what's the visibility of the social enterprise sector in Scotland for COP? The answer is, what do you want it to be? Because that's literally what it comes down to. If you work collaboratively you can come up with some storytelling thing and Neil was chatting there about that sometimes it's just a very small window but actually COP26 starts now so we've actually got an event with all of the innovation centres starting on the 3rd of November I'm just plugging it early and it's called the uh, Countdown to COP26 because we've got a year till COP so we've going to chat a, a range of stepping stone events up until COP there's COP itself, and then there's a year after when the UK are still the ambassadors for COP. So it's actually two years we've got to showcase social enterprise. So if you could get together, come up with a kind of social enterprise strategy and don't overthink it, just think about something that we could do for COP specifically. And then we can do that, we can launch it this side of the year, do some stepping stone events you know, COP, 22 badge, stepping stone events leading up towards COP and then after COP. So, you know, there's there's a long run in and a long run out for this. There's a bit of an echo happening somewhere. Has someone got a microphone on or something? Can you I'm hear it? Sorry, any? I'm not picking. Can you hear that? Yes. Could I ask anybody who's not on to mute their microphone, please? Just a little bit of a, an echo for people. So, Roland, do you have any particular well, questions I, or ideas? Yeah, I'd be coming in under a label of um, Scottish Rural Action because we've already had a climate working group yeah. there and we're just hoping to regroup again in the next few days and be looking to feed into COP. Yeah. But also, of course, just as a local level, living in a rural area, one's very aware of so much happening and certainly challenges. I raised one earlier on of the cost of land to do things on my food growing and affordable housing and repopulating rural areas is concerned mm -hmm. and the need for a change in the legislation mm -hmm. that stems back to 1959, the Town and Country Planning Act that requires when a community wants to do a buyout, a full market value, which is driven up by speculative wealth in a whole variety of different ways. So that's a very real problem that needs legislation that is an inhibitor of projects. So maybe there's some good news in the horizon. The Scottish Land Commission under Hamish Trench and his fantastic team, I was seconded there last year for a year to chat yeah. about these very issues because up until recently, Scotland been viewing vacant and derelict land and it's and it's very similar to what I'm speaking about with climate change. They viewed that as a problem to manage. Therefore, it sat on that a uh, problem to manage part of the ledger 
and and as a, and I'm going to be honest with you, not many people want to deal with problems all the time. They want to explore solutions. So it's even the, the, the nomenclature is important here. If you have environmental and sustainability officers, they predominantly end out working in compliance. Mm. So their job is to stop bad things happening. Now, yeah. I, do I look like someone that would be interested in just ticking boxes all day and running around with a high-vis jacket? And No. I wouldn't, right? Because that wouldn't interest me. What interests me is working with people trying to get stuff done. So, and yeah, I'm the, a sustainability guy. I've been doing it for nearly longer than I care to imagine, 20 odd years. And I only manage to get stuff done by not by saying, down with this sort of thing. Somebody should sort that is by saying, can we help? What can we do? I actually know someone that I think that could help you. Let's get together. And we formulate all the time these little groupings of people. And there's loads of them at the moment. There's one I had a conversation with yesterday that trying to get a completely new shipping sector in Scotland, a completely new sustainable shipping sector from first principles. So excited at that meeting. And that was just uh, 11 people, you know, mm -hmm. and, I, and I keep thinking of uh, Margaret Mead, the Irish poet who said, uh, oh, you need to change the world. There's a small group of committed people. In fact, that's all that ever works. That was a brilliant line. And I use that quite a lot in slides. So for me, contact Hamish Trench and the Scottish Land Commission and offer a, a a prospect to them rather than a problem to fix. Does that make sense? You know, sure, that's great. So I'd say, it's saying the community that I re represent or reside in, I can't do something with this bit of land at that particular time in this sort of way to lead to that sort of outcome. That is a far better thing than saying there's a problem with the system. You know, and I think that's that's the point I keep trying to get to. And the beauty of it is, is that for the 30 years the vacant derelict land register existed, it got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger every year. It's now sitting at 11,000 hectares. Yes, that's two times the size of the island of Butte. So it's a massive, it's a massive challenge for Scotland. Or it's a major opportunity for solar farms, biodiversity gardens, you know, some raised bed plantings, all sorts of stuff. But we just need to shift our mindset, Roland. Any other questions coming in, Nina, that you see are quite challenging? Yeah, I think you're on mute at the moment, Nina. I'm new to this. Um, <laughs> thanks for keeping me right. Thank you for your contribution there, Roland. Um, Naomi Roland. is going to come on. Uh, she's well. She's got a question here. Um, right. She says, "My question is very practical. Are there ways we can offer bike hire to delegates, create spaces in Glasgow that envisage what place in a city could look like moving forwards? What has happened to waste that's created as part of the event? Are people working with COP venues to help them showcase sustainable best practice?" Yeah, answer is yes to all of that. You've got a guy called Duncan Booker, who's the kind of leading on the co-op practicalities in Glasgow Council, and a lady okay. called Michelle Michelle McGinty, who's working on the logistics. So these two people specifically, and again, you can Google them and find out who they are, but they are, they are the people who are doing logistics, you know, so which is all of that stuff about and mm -hmm. getting people in, getting people out. On the back of that, we've also got people like Jaguar. We've got uh, lots of big firms are saying, could we run all of the delegates from whichever airport they arrive at, uh, electric free or sorry, carbon free to the venue and do. Mm. So everyone at this moment, you'd be surprised, or for, sorry, you would not be surprised the amount of businesses coming forward saying, you know, we, we want a focus, but they have to earn it. And, and what yeah. they're doing is they're offering all sorts of solutions for bits and pieces. The big challenge in all of these things, uh, Naomi, is getting to the front of the queue when it comes to the, you know people mm -hmm. looking at all this stuff because it is quite overwhelming, which is where I can help. I think if you pick up with me after this is that we'll either have a call, a Zoom or something, and we'll chat about something quite specific. The bike one's fantastic. I already know Scottish Power, I think, are looking at doing something with the uh, uh, electric cars and then maybe electric bikes, but we can have a chat about that. But definitely, and it's far easier, and I know this sounds condescending but it's far easier to say here's a solution and an idea ready to go than I think we could do you know for businesses it's far easier to engage with prospects than it is with theories so if you've mm -hmm. got an idea get it written down get it evaluated don't mean evaluated but just get it understood and then get it to the right people and I've got lists of businesses coming out of my ears who are saying we want to do something we want to do something and again I keep mentioning Brewdog who are fantastic they didn't wait to figure out how they were going to do it. They didn't wait to all the analysis was in place. The, James Watt, the captain of Brewdog, just said, do you know what? We could do this and we can do it and we're going to do it and we're doing it. And they've done it. 
it's just yeah, fantastic. Very agile. Very mm -hmm. agile. They just got on with it. Mm -hmm. Really agile. Uh, but Naomi's looking in the longer term as well. You know, will businesses have the opportunity um, to offer the services for a more long term commitment beyond the climate change event? You know, looking for those kind of opportunities that might last beyond just that day. With Glasgow or with the COP or? Oh, with, when they offer the services at COP, would they also uh, be able to show a longer term commitment to climate beyond the, the event, you know, the organisations themselves? Yes, I mean... Have the, I got that right, Nomi? Yeah, well, businesses that want to offer these services at COP also have to show a longer term commitment to climate beyond the event. So rather than just being a, a temporary impact. Yeah, yeah. Again, there, there is a, there'll be a committee of people at the UK government, it's the, uh, the Foreign and Commonwealth Office and the Cabinet Office, they are... They run COP, they're COP masters, they work with the UN. The UN, you pitch to get your city to, you, you pitch to host it, UK did with Italy, they won it. The UK decided Glasgow was a host venue, which was phenomenal. Now that, that dear green place now has a chance to show that it is dear, sorry, it is green and dear. So that's a big opportunity there. And I think there'll be, there'll be a procurement triage team of people who will look at every single thing. But that's for official COP events what i'm suggesting is is that you can't hide a good thing in glasgow when cops here if the world's eyes and the reason why i'll say this is that back in 2009 i took a cop team of scotland plc out to copenhagen and copenhagen was hailed mm -hmm. as hopenhagen it transpired to be a shambles it was a disaster because it was mm -hmm. just again more combat you know what i've been speaking about more combat who's to blame it's their fault it's his fault somebody should do something about that and it resulted in disaster and the world stood still and went backwards cop and uh, and and paris was completely different it was about aligning the environment and the economy so suddenly you had this alignment this beautiful narrative that people could do what was missing from it was a detailed plan this is what glasgow has to produce glasgow has to produce a plan that nations can go right we're going to commit to net zero we're going to commit to it by that time and we're going to enshrine it in law and we're going to crack on and do stuff you know so there's lots of emphasis and expectation about glasgow i just i just hope we don't let the world down i know that sounds mm. a bit melodramatic but we need we need to be more italian sorry about that yeah, but we need, yeah, to, we need to i'm there just, with you i've got italian blood as well so. good for you we just need to <laughs> say and we need to not be feared we need to not say oh well what if we get it wrong we haven't done all the analysis mm. go and speak to Brewdog. They just, they just cracked on and did it. The AG are cracking on and doing it. Wood Group's cracking on and doing it. There's lists of business now that are coming forward saying, you know, we we don't need to be invited into saving the planet. We realise that it's economically sensible to do so. And doing good is good for business. And I wonder, given there's a lot of players coming into that already, how people are feeling about how they see themselves coming into that. And I think that Naomi was alluding to that. And... There isn't a lot of time, it's next year, so the time really is now. And people are dealing with the, the impact of COVID-19 already and they're under-resourced. And does anybody want to come through and talk a bit about that, about how they, they see that they'll be able to place themselves, what the capacity is? See, see if it helps while people are thinking, it might shape the thinking. Is a lot of the preparation you'll be doing for returning back to normal is also your green recovery thinking for mm -hmm. COP26. So it's, this isn't a different story. This is the same mm -hmm. story, you know, because it's going to be not too long before First Minister stops having to speak so much about COVID and then starts saying, we've been planning for COP whilst doing this. And the green recovery that we're also desperately seeking is your COP story. So it's not as if you're not mm -hmm. doing, mm -hmm. building mm -hmm. back One your business. It's, they're, they're symbiotic. Yes. Uh huh. Any other questions, or anyone feel motivated to come on? Twenty-three people on. Um, Can't all be shy. We've, we've got about ten minutes left, so it's a great opportunity to catch Martin. Well, you can on our our last this one of the last sessions of the day. Maybe if there's anything in there. The question part maybe everyone's just a bit kind of uh yeah and i'm having a look at that yeah. um there's some so, good certainly some good links coming through for different people to share which i think will be great for people to yeah. refer to after the day but uh questions is really what we're looking for now yeah i'm sure there will be some in there 
So please, please forward them. Whether you want to come on, just you know, request to share um, video and and sound, or you just want to pop something in the session box. Either would be great to be. We'd love to hear more from you. So, so it might help people to also think about the the sequencing. The sequencing is COVID is ever present. We're focused. We have got on one it. coming through. Oh, good, good. From Elsa. Hi there, I'm from the Social Enterprise Academy. Any ideas about how learning and development can contribute? It's 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 essential. It's absolutely essential. If you think about a lot of the new, so the first thing is is that you hear Scotland's unique narrative in COP26 is going to be about this just transition. I know I mentioned it earlier, and, and when I get time, I'll try and figure out how to put a link in there. The just transition for Scotland, we're the only country that actually has a just transition commission, and the idea is is that we look to re-educate, repurpose, refocus, reimagine a lot of the sectors that are still sitting in that wedded to fossil fuels, you know, oil and gas, certain, you know, transport, etc. is still stuck in that space. And and rather than throw the baby out of the bathwater, as I intimated late, earlier, which isn't in any sense of the word a good idea, right? Because it's uneconomical, it's unsensible, and it causes major intergenerational issues and social blight and all the rest of it. And if you don't believe me, go and drive around some of the towns in Scotland that used to be vibrant with the uh, shipyards or mining, and you'll see what's left. So we can't do that again. It just, that's not sensible to do. So we need to try and think about how do we re purpose and re-educate and reimagine. Like I say, yesterday I had a fascinating chat with a, a, a dozen or so people about shipping is one of the toughest sectors. It's never really been included in climate change because it's tough, it's difficult, nobody really owns the seas, you know, and everyone's looking at everyone else in that sector to change. You know, everyone's saying, yeah, change is absolutely vital, but I'm not willing to change. And that's what you were getting that lock. And now what we're saying is because they've not done that, they are missing from this whole narrative. There's nothing you hear about shipping. And all of a sudden, if you Google sustainable shipping uh, group, you'll see a lady called Diane Gilpin, who's this kind of, I'm, I'm calling her Bono from Live Aid. She's just had this epiphany and said, you know what, we need to get together and decide that shipping in Scotland specifically, we used to be amazing at shipping. You've got lots of shipyards, we've got lots of abandoned ports that aren't really doing lots of stuff and we've got a heritage and a culture wedded to shipping and all of that stuff could you imagine we could regain that and have ships coming into our ports and being uh, retrofitted with hydrogen or ammonia or some other kind of clean transport or different technologies like fast rig which cuts the emissions of the ships down by 20 percent there's so many things that we could be doing and if you think about edu learning and development every person working in engineering needs to think about what's the engineer of the future look like what's the skill set i need because you look at the moment my nephew is a gas service engineer and he speaks to me all the time about it he says all these gas boilers all across scotland are going to have to go at some point and they're going to be fitted with something what what, what does that mean for me and i said to him we'll go and figure out how to fit the new type mm -hmm. boilers mm -hmm. you know so i think so there's an opportunity there so social enterprise could start to map the future skills and then and then service them go and speak with skills development scotland damien and his brilliant team and they, they'd be interested in that i've got two more questions for you martin i've got one from elaine calderwood um how would we be able to find out more about the race to zero project yep. and i also have another one from Naomi um asking about what about outside of glasgow will clp just have this focus are there ways areas outside of glasgow can get involved yeah. That's one about Race to Zero and one about get involved if you're outside Glasgow. So, Elaine, if you're near Google, Google Race to Zero, UNF, Treble C, and you'll see it. And the guy's name there is Nigel Topping, T-O-P-P-I-N-G. And if you ping on LinkedIn or Twitter or whichever you use, if any, or none, uh, you'll see Nigel. Send him a message and just say, you work in the social enterprise. There's a narrative missing from his his collective race, his collective race to zeros, like I say, he's got a rate to zero aviation, uh, transport, uh, construction. There's all of these going on. There isn't one for social enterprise. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean it's an emission. It just means it's an opportunity. So we need to shape one up. And I mentioned this earlier when I did the talk, maybe with, you know, some, some of us get together, get, get a wee group huddle and then come up with a race to zero, a social enterprise race to zero and uh, get it to Nigel. And if you get it to Nigel, he considered it. He hasn't got one already. There's a big hint there. And it might be something because it is a way of mobilizing civic society. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? And again, mm -hmm. Glasgow makes 
people make Glasgow. There's just something about that strap line that's just an open goal for social enterprise to step in and say to Susan Aitken and Anne Maria Donnell, the chief exec and the and the council leader, we've got a brilliant story about Glasgow and the people of Glasgow and what we want to see from COP and the outcomes we want to see come from COP and the inputs we want to put into it. So there's something there. Uh, so hopefully that helps Elaine and Naomi. No, it's not just Glasgow. Glasgow is the host and actually Glasgow is probably the least, there'll be the, it'll be such a lockdown now. When I was in Copenhagen, honestly, it was just like a military zone. And we run about the SEC and the hydro is just going to be a no-go area, literally no-go. No one will be allowed anywhere near it for a thousand miles because of normal, you know, threats of activism. And you've got the world leaders in one room. It's also a very handy target for, you know, bad people. Anyway, so needless to say, there's not, not an awful lot happens there apart from the BBC taking pictures from across the road. However, that then frees up the rest of the whole of Scotland to stand up and do certain different events and have lots of stuff. And when I mentioned these COP stepping stone events, it is literally a stepping stone. So they'll be in Aberdeen are coming up with ideas, Inverness, Dumfries, the islands are, uh, and North Ayrshire Council were on earlier. I'd love to go back to the chat from North Ayrshire Council and say, let's get a big island initiative on Aaron or do something like that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's literally limited by our imagination. And yes, I realise we're dealing with COVID, but that's why I keep making the point the the way out of COVID is creating the future, not trying to improve the past, you know. So create the future space for your business, your visibility. Why do you think Brewdog have done what they've done? Look at the new branding they've got. Look at the new initiative and opportunity they've got. That's that's a very clever thing to do. But the James Watt could easily have said, I can't be bothered with climate change. We're too busy focusing on our business. Oh, I'll make climate change my business. You know, so there's a slight shift in emphasis here. I hope that helped uh, Naomi's question. I've got a really good one here from Sarah, who is saying, super discussion, you're as inspirational as ever, Martin. Given your optimism, what do you hope COP26 will achieve and be remembered for? Which is a, a fantastic one to round up on. It's a killer question, that one. Hi, Sarah. It really Great is a killer you. question. Well, again, you know, if you ask a negative doer, they'd say, well, it's probably, you know, Reverend I am jolly. Oh, it's probably not going to. I don't see that. I see, but this is the thing. I see this COP being the one that everyone will speak about for generations. This COP, the Glasgow Agreement, will be the one that got it right. I, I guarantee this will be the one that got it right, and I'm not going to stop working until it happens. Because if I do and if it doesn't happen, then I'm to blame. You know, that's the kind of, that's the self-motivation I keep thinking about. So COP26, Glasgow, will be known as the COP that managed to get businesses, communities, and governments working in tandem, looking at big opportunities, being bold, being brave, moving forward together, tackling the big system changes that uh, Catherine and Indy spoke about, which is so important, you know, that, that system change. Incrementally trying to improve parts of a system is almost pointless. I mean, I wouldn't want to be rude and say it's pointless, but it's almost pointless. Why would you do that? It's like, you know, the great old stories when the, the surgeon says, the, Mrs. Smith, the operation was a great success, but your husband unfortunately died. You think what you know the operation might have worked beautifully, but the outcome wasn't good. So there's no point in just trying to be busy. We need to be productive and we need to be disruptive and we need to be collaborative. So with Sarah's help and in Naomi's and Elaine's and yours, Nina, and everyone else involved here, we will never get this chance again. I, and I'll mm -hmm. probably finish with John F. Kennedy, you know, a hero of mine, you know, if not you who and if not now when. This isn't just going to happen because we think it should. We have to make it happen. So it's going to be great. I think you've created a lot of momentum there, Martin, between your talk earlier and this one. And certainly it's not only been inspiring, but, you know, you've got quite a different way of thinking about this. And it's very much about we have to act. There's a really special, unique opportunity. And I know I and, and our team at CIS and, and many others today will really want to be part of that, you know, be an active part of that, not just talking about that. Well, you can be. There's, there's, there literally is nothing stopping you. No. We, we can, we can, we can think things are stopping us when we go. I've got a list of emails to go through, and I've got a lot of things, and I've got to worry about the here and now. If you do that, you won't get involved. I guarantee it. If you say, "I'm going to reprioritize my to-do list and put it at the very top of mm. it," I'm going to position what I do, how I do it at COP, and I'm going to find out who it is, and it's me and others, and Nigel Topping, and the government, and loads of people. There are loads of people wanting to showcase great stuff, so be the great stuff, and we'll showcase it. 
So I think that's is that four o'clock on the nose. So probably... we are we're just um, a minute past on my clock. Um, just before we we go off, is there any last pressing questions? Don't hit me with the meaning of life one, folks. <laughs> just that's, uh, that'd take a bit longer. <sighs> Well, thank you everybody for all your comments coming through and thank you for your questions. Uh, thank you very much for participating today. We hope you've enjoyed it. Martin's mentioned many things that no doubt you can follow up on. I know that he said he's going to signpost to some people and organisations. All that leaves now is to go on to the what we'd normally call final plenary if we're at a, a physical conference. Um, but there is going to be a, a roundup of, of comments. So. Um, if you go back to, to the main stage, I think there will be comments and I understand there is also a quiz for those amongst you who are, are quite competitive. I think you mentioned that earlier, Martin. Right, so I'm in. Just thank you very much to everybody for participating. Thank you very much to, to Martin for inspiration, ideas and, and giving us and all that. And thank, you, thank you, Thank you to you, Thank you. Take care. See you all back in the Bye. main stage. Bye-bye.